Good afternoon, or maybe good evening or good morning, depending where you are in the world. I just finished conducting a meditation to let go of stressful thoughts at a body level in a group uh, that is not mine, but where I conduct meditations every month. And I thought I would jump here to share with you something that happened today on Clubhouse that made me realize that although I may be repeating a lot of what I'm teaching, but sometimes when you hear things eight, nine, ten times, the tenth time, it suddenly clicks and you suddenly shift. So what I wanted to share about today is about co-parenting with the universe using our emotional state, the power of it. Um, and if you're new to this group, you, you may not, not have heard me talk about co-parenting with the universe a lot, but that's basically the big picture of what I coach, I mean, what I teach too, because in my story, my personal story, I had to learn to co-parent with the universe in order to don't to bounce back from depression. And co-parenting with the universe is really tapping into the power of God, the universe, the field source to not only guide you, but also assist you, frankly, because when you consciously co-parent with the universe, hi there, just let us know where you're watching from and uh, what do you what do you associate with co-parenting with the universe? So as I was explaining, it's really being guided and assisted by the universe. However, if we don't proactively work with our emotions, we may do it in a passive way and not get the results we want. So for example, this morning I was in Clubhouse and I hold the room every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And if you want, come join us because that way we'll be able to talk with our voice together. And we were talking about using the power of our emotions in parenting and especially laughter to reset our emotion emotional state and vibration and I had a couple there that I really enjoy I I'm gonna try to have them here on Facebook because they do laughter yoga together and frankly when you hear them laughing and you start working with them laughing it seems very artificial at the beginning but then soon enough it becomes contagious and that was the the feedback we got from people who attended that session this morning so uh, again, it's in Clubhouse and the club is called Conscious Parenting. I'll put the link here in the, in the description. If you want to tap with us, uh, I also have the EFT Tapping Together Club and I'll also put the link here. But what I discovered is when I asked the people who were there about what emotions were their favorite ones that they loved returning to and how did they go about feeling that way in their life. And the feedback that I got was that most people, a lot of people don't consciously go to uh, like proactively do something about feeling an emotion. And I feel that it's a huge waste because as you know, based on the way you feel, you're going to act in a certain way. You're going to behave in a certain way. Your kids and everyone that you come in contact with will feel a certain way because you radiate it. Both you, you share it with your words, your tone and all that, but also with a very subtle clues that your subconscious is going to pick up on when you interact with someone and you won't even be conscious about. That's why we can feel rapport with people. We feel connected because we pick up on stuff and we're like, that's the same thing. I did that in a job interview many, many years ago, over 11 years ago, 
where I was mirroring the person who was interviewing me as an experiment to see if we could build, build more rapport and if I could be hired. I was hired, by the way. But that's something we can use. And based on how we feel, our cues and clues are different. Sometimes you're going to go see your teen and let's say you're going to say, okay, I'm going to stay zen. You, there's something behind your mind that's bothering you and you take all that stress with you and that can be felt, that can be seen by the position of your body and very subtle movement of your mouth that you won't even think you're doing. That's where the forensic um, investigators use to know if people lie, etc., etc. They use it in psychology too. And on an energy level, you will radiate something and that also will be picked up. So it's a pity not to use the power of your emotion without even mentioning that you could feel better 70% of the day, maybe. Because stuff happen. I happens. I agree that we'll have crisis, we'll have everything coming at us in our life. And we cannot always be in a positive state of mind, in an emotional positive state. And that wouldn't be authentic anyway, because negative emotions have their place. But it doesn't mean you need to bathe in it 24-7, like you're taking a bath in stress, you're taking a bath in irritation, you're taking a bath in worry. Because everything that you practice over and over and over with intensity will wire your brain and soon enough you will be that person that's always who's always worrying do you know people like that maybe do you know people who are always angry do you know people who are always seeing the negative side of stuff i was talking this morning with a friend of mine and she was mentioning that in her business she's coming across a woman who's very negative and that at the beginning she didn't pick up that it was actually her way of doing life. So she was trying to bring positive stuff, positive ways to see her situation. And soon enough, she realized, no, that's just how she does life. That's how she's processing and perceiving life. Is that it a pity? It is. You could be processing life with more clarity on a regular basis. And then you'll see on the energy elevator that instead of stopping at the floor of worrying and going from worrying to maybe neutral or worrying to maybe hopeful on a daily basis, like dominantly um, vacillating between those three floors, you can go to being on a dominant basis between hope and power, hope, hope, and gratitude, which is one of the highest one. Wouldn't you want that? And when you feel grateful for your teen, let's say, don't you think they, fem- they can feel that? Don't you think there is more love in the room when you interact? So how do you go about it? What I always tell people is keep a notebook of what is bringing you where. What kind of activity is bringing you to gratitude? What kind of thoughts? Because that's where it's all starting. It starts at a thought level. And sometimes we're not aware of our thoughts, but we can be aware of how we feel, even if we can't pinpoint that specific thought. We can decide in a moment, like I have, I have people put timers on their phone and stop. How do I feel? Do I like how I feel? And then what am I thinking about? And sometimes you do know, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you just know you worry and you don't know the exact thought. But you can decide in that moment to let go of the worry and intentionally blow it out, intentionally clap it out, do something, go gardening. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. When I'm barefoot in my grass, And I garden, I feel grateful, I feel grounded, I feel aligned. So in that moment, you go do something that is in your notebook that you're taking notes as you go through your day of things that bring you pleasure, that put you to a certain emotional state. And that way, if you don't have ideas in the moment, let's say you're worried and all you can hear in your mind is worry, worry, worry. You can look at your notebook and say, oh, gardening. Nah, I don't really feel like gardening right now. 
Okay, listening to music. Oh, maybe. Then you have a list of songs that bring you up. And sometimes it's a rock song and sometimes it's a soft song. There is an artist called Helen Jane Long and a piece of music that's called Eclipse that literally brings me to heaven every time I listen to it. Or that can be go shimmy, you know, like belly dance and shake, 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 shake that feeling of you. That can be call a friend, have tea over the phone with a friend. That can be take a walk outside. Anything that's on your list, you'll find one or two things that you resonate with doing in the moment. So that's a very practical tool that I wanted to remind you of. And the concept that practicing emotions on a regular basis more and more often will create wiring in your brain and soon enough if you practice it enough and regularly enough with enough intensity they will become your dominant emotions through the day and this will change your life because everything will change your perception your your behavior your actions everything and of course your results That's my piece of wisdom for today, all inspired by this morning's, this morning's room in a clubhouse, like I mentioned. I love clubhouse. This is a place where I really connected with amazing people, authentic, vulnerable, and you could too. You could connect with us. So let me know what you think. Let me know what it brought you to, what thought, what feeling, what memory, what idea did this uh, led you to, create it for you. And if you want me to talk about a specific topic, because I come here live, I, I will be most, um, not certainly, but probably will be here live every Monday at one, but also will pop up randomly. If there are things that you want to cover, maybe you want an idea to reframe a story that's not serving you, the way you describe things in your head about a situation, suggest and we'll work with it. I can create meditations, I can create questions, we can do a little bit of tapping. And what I'm going to do too a lot more is, and especially for my members, is a lot of tapping to anchor positive stuff because tapping is amazing to process negative emotions, negative relationships, negative um, events and memories and even trauma. But it also can be used in a proactive way to anchor and create wiring in our brain. So I'll do more of that too. I hope it serves you. Let's take a deep breath, breath together to bring in us ah, relaxation, feeling free and stress-free. I'll see you next time. Meanwhile, go and harvest the power of your emotions. Bye for now. Mwah.